Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage for our first deep dive presentation today, Hani Hawari of Geotap. The presentation will talk about the electric vehicle suitability assessment in Latin America. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hani Hawari. I'm a senior product manager at uh, Geotap's uh, sustainability product management team. And today I'm going to share with you uh, some information about what we at GTAP are doing to help fleet go electric. And for that, I'm going to go and provide an overview of a tool we created called the EV suitability assessment. Uh, but before going to the tool, uh, I just want to let you know how, how this tool came to be. So when we were talking to fleets to understand uh, the challenges they have when trying to select electric vehicles, uh, we saw that the fleets had uh, several uh, questions that were all grouped into four uh, different categories. The first was about performance. Is there any V out there that can do the requirements I need? What's going to happen if uh, it becomes very hot or very cold? Will the range I need still be available in that vehicle? Uh, other questions were about vehicle selection. So what EVs are there out there? I'm not very familiar with the EV market so much, so I don't know what my mix models are available, what prices there are, so I might need help with that. The third category is about return on investment, total cost of ownership. Okay, if I get these EVs, will I be saving money or will I be paying more money? How much is that? And how will my cost structure change, uh, given that it's uh, slightly, it's different than what I'm familiar with, which is internal combustion engine vehicles. And lastly, there are a few questions about the environmental impact. I want to reduce my carbon emissions for the organization. How much uh, would that uh, environmental impact be? How much would that carbon reduction be if I switch some of my vehicles to electric vehicles? So we took all this feedback, looked at it, and we came with the electric vehicle suitability assessment tool, which basically is a tool that takes the guesswork out of acquiring electric vehicles and figure out figuring out where they fit in the fleet. So the tool uh, is uh, available within the MyGTA platform. It's data-driven and user-friendly. Uh, what it does is that it helps identify which uh, vehicles in your fleet are good candidates to be replaced by electric vehicles. And we do that by checking the range requirements of each and every vehicle. And we, for every vehicle, we see if there is an electric vehicle that can do the exact route without having the driver having to stop and charge during the day. And we also look at the financials at a high level and we want, we want to see whether the vehicle is going to be, over the lifetime, be of equivalent or maybe save you money compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle. And the tool also provides an estimation of how much tailpipe carbon emission reduction you can achieve by going with the recommendation that the tool provides. Now, before I go into the, uh, into the tool and the features, I have some very good breaking news to share with you today. And the news is that the EV stability assessment tool is now available for Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, and Chile. And so this is, so far, the EVSA has been available in North America and in the US and Canada. It has been available in Australia, New Zealand, and in a few countries in Europe. As of today, you can uh, run this tool and you will have localized information uh, for these four countries in Latin America. And this is just the first phase. As we see interest in electric electrification increase in, in the in Latin America, we will be adding new countries and we will be adding new major models that are available in those local markets to the tool. Uh, so with that, I, you might be asking, how can we get this tool? Uh, the EV suitability assessment is available via the Geota marketplace. So uh, if the fleet manager is a user of uh, the Geota platform, they can just go to the Geota marketplace and install it. We provide it at no additional cost, so anybody who has access to GeoTab and the marketplace can go install it and check it out. And it's also available on all the plans that GeoTab supports. Now, we're 
if the plan, if, if the user is on a higher plan where engine information is available, such as fuel consumption, we will use these actual fuel consumption values to provide more accurate uh, information about fuel savings, carbon uh, reduction, and fuel cost savings. Uh, however, this if, if, if they're on a lower plan that doesn't provide that, we will go with estimates and the tool will still work. The key unique attributes for the EV suitability assessment, the first one, the first tenet is accuracy. And accuracy comes from two sources. The first is Geotab's uh, real-world uh, data uh, for electric vehicles in the market. So Geotab today, uh, we support about 100 different nature models of electric vehicles, and we are collecting data from these vehicles in the real world all over the world. And what we're doing is we're aggregating this information about the EV performance from all of these major models and anonymizing it. And, may, and this gives us an idea about every major model, what kind of actual performance will we be getting at different temperature levels and uh, different conditions, outside conditions. So we use information in the VSA to make sure that when we are modeling an EV and trying to see if it fits the drive cycle of the fleet's vehicle, that based on the real world information we've seen, is it gonna be possible or not? Uh, the other source is the fact that we are using telematics to collect the drive cycle information and the drive patterns of the fleet. So there is no estimates here. We're using the actuals. We know exactly how much daily distance is driven by every vehicle and the distance requirements for every vehicle on the fleet. Also, the EVSA is convenient. The fact that it's integrating within my GTAB, it means that uh, the tool can have instant access to trip data. The fleet manager doesn't need to flip between tools and export data from one system to another system. It's all uh, happening in the background automatically. We also pre-populate the, uh, the tool with country-specific EV availability information, as well as country-specific costs for these electric vehicles, for procurement, for maintenance, for, for other things. So very quickly, the user can just go click, 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 and they can get a reasonably accurate assessment. They can always refine this information, but uh, we provide a same ground-level defaults for, for them to, to get started. The tool is also interactive. It's not a, a uh, just a static report. So once the results are there, the, the, the user can go in and change some of the assessment, go back, tweak some of the numbers, and they can see the results instantaneously. Okay, so who is this tool targeted for? So all over the world, we're seeing that there are organizations who are having mandates when it comes to sustainability and carbon reduction the mandates to adopt electric vehicles as means to reach these sustainability goals. And more and more we're seeing mandates to use electric vehicles as a means to reduce costs of operations whenever possible. And the segments most interested in these mandates, uh, first is governments at different levels, municipal or uh, local, or even at the state or federal level in certain uh, countries. Uh, electric utilities have a lot of interest in seeing electric vehicles and, and leading by example for their customers, showing that electric vehicles work. Fleet management companies is another se segment looking at EVs. And last mile and service delivery fleets can see a lot of benefits and they're interested in seeing what EVs can do to their markets. So let's go over the feature highlights of the EV SA tool. Uh, one important uh, feature we have or tenet that we use in the VSA is that making sure that the electric vehicles that we are recommending are going to be able to do the drive cycle that the, the fleet manager needs. So questions like will they even meet the range requirements, trying to assure the driver that they can do the entire daily job without having to stop and charge during the day, and that they can do this even in the hottest or coldest day where they have climate control on are all things that we bake into the tool. And uh, because this is for mostly EVs are a new thing, uh, we saw 
that it was uh, appropriate to be conservative by default. And that's why uh, we are very conservative when we are doing range assessment and we want to make sure that the EV can work every day of the year, even if it was the longest driven day in the worst temperature. So that well, this is the default. And this process assumption means that the results are, uh, we are under recommending EVs because we want to make sure the EV that we recommend, we know for 100% that it's uh, uh, going to be work for the fleet, especially for the as I mentioned, fleets that are getting introduced to EVs, so they're they're new to, to electrification and they want this extra confidence before they switch to electric vehicles. Now, you tell me, some some folks might say, I'm comfortable with electric vehicles and I don't need to be this conservative. What can I do? So the EVSA provides uh, the customization to allow you to decide what the best fit means to you, and also shows you for vehicles that per vehicle for the vehicles that are not recommended, why is the tool not recommending them? Is it because of range? Is it because of cost? Is it because of both? So you get an idea about what the tool is doing and then you can go and tweak what the best fit means to you so that you can get the result that is satisfactory to you. Another view that you can get out of the tool is a financial analysis. So we, the, the tool, when we're doing financial analysis, we look at the total lifetime cost of the electric vehicle. Uh, first, we assume that you, the fleet manager is going to be replacing the existing vehicle and they have two options. Should they go with an electric vehicle or should they replace the vehicle by a non-electric vehicle? So we look at these two scenarios, which can compare the lifetime costs and see and show them whether going with EV is going to save them money over the lifetime of the vehicle or not. And we also provide an edited view for the entire recommendation. For environmental impact, we also provide views about the tailpipe carbon dioxide reduction for going with this recommendation. And we compare it to the actuals from the current state of the fleet from the selected fleet vehicles that they used to run. Uh, the assessment for. We also provide a view for the uh, fuel uh, cost reduction, as well as the fuel volume reduction, if that is also required. Uh, one last thing, uh, the EVSA is also extensible. So we built it on top of the MyG Tap Thematics platform, which is open. Uh, we have open APIs for all of that. So this is the philosophy of GeoTab. Uh, on top of that, we built the EV stability assessment. One big part of that is the big data analysis we do to understand the real world performance of EVs and how EVs are going to perform uh, if we substitute them into your fleet for the for your existing vehicles. So this is one piece that we uh, do in the background to make sure the EVSA is as accurate as possible. On top of that, we have two modules, the range analysis that I talked about and the energy consumption calculations. And this is where our core competency is and we try to make it as accurate as possible. And in the future, we're working on enhancing the algorithm to support more, uh, more scenarios, more mixed models, uh, all from what we can glean from the thematics information from EVs out there. On top of that, there's the costing layer and the user interface. And uh, we, we are open uh, to having uh, third parties use these modules within APIs to integrate into other systems. So you can keep this in mind. If there is another solution that you see you have that can benefit from this information, it doesn't have to be going through the tool directly. It can be also accessed through APIs. And with that, I would like to thank you. As I mentioned, the EV suitability assessment is available today uh, for the uh, four countries I, I mentioned. So you can just go ahead if you're a Geotab user and go to the marketplace, install it, and then you can run your analysis. Or if you are not a Geotab user or if you have any questions, please reach out to your uh, Geotab representative and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hani, thank you very much for your presentation. And now, please welcome on stage Manuel Tamayo, Country Head Mexico of Element Arval Global Alliance. He will deep dive into the evolution of fleet management in Latin America.
Hi, everyone, and welcome to a, a new Fleet LATAM conference 2020, now in virtual mode, uh, unprecedented times for all of us. And we're going to make the most out of this uh, great event in, in, in virtual mode. Today, we will be talking about evolution of the fleet management. I'm Manuel Tamayo. I'm the country head for element fleet management in Mexico. And element is part of the Element Arval Global Alliance. It's a pleasure to be right here with you and hope you find this interesting and we address most of the topics that you have in mind about this presentation. Who is, uh, just a, a quick intro, who is uh, the Element Arval Global Alliance? And we're actually celebrating our 25 years of, of this uh, great uh, alliance and being a trusted partners. Element uh, Arval have a, a, a coverage of more than 50 countries and we've been going on for more than 25 years and serving customers with more than 3 million vehicles all over the world. And inside the Alliance, there are a couple of other partners which uh, uh, make this uh, just the best global alliance in the world. Uh, I'll touch very quickly and very briefly some of the ideas that we have in this Element Arval Global Alliance. And just because I want to address you two main topics, no? The focus on, on a shared view of mobility and connected electric vehicles and how to support our, co our customers into transi transitioning into this new mo mobility trend. Uh, these, uh, these are obviously part of our pillars within the, uh, within the alliance and definitely something that we will be addressing today. Going a little bit into the agenda, we'll start with a global view, Latin perspective, some of the key drivers in the industry and the challenges that we foresee in the industries. And obviously, and this is where we will be spending most of our time, the evolution of the fleet industry with this new trend of electric and hybrid vehicles. Let me pass and let, let us start on, on a global view. So global sales have been decreasing overall at about 10% from 2016 to 2019. On the contrary, the trend of global uh, electric vehicles and uh, hybrid vehicles has been growing more than 20, 260% over this three year period. Just last year, electric and, and hybrid vehicles accounted for almost 10% of the total vehicle sales in the world. So this is an, an, an amazing trend. What are the things that are coming through? Well, we, we foresee a, a, a price parity or the, the industry foresees a, a price parity for around 2025, which is one of the topics that we will be addressing a little bit further on in this presentation. And the other one is how the European and the Chinese market have been in driving this road. They represent around 70% of the vehicles sold in 2019. And, and this is mainly due to the subsidies and the um, benefits that the government uh, in those, uh, let's say, countries, both in the European Union and, 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 the, and, and China, uh, have been placing uh, to drive these, uh, these vehicle sales, mostly driven to uh, reduce the overall CO2 emissions in those two countries. A little bit of, of, of what we saw last year. No, we, we definitely saw last year that 10% of, of the vehicles that were sold were either electric or hybrid vehicles. But then again, this, 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 uh, this was a slowdown in the trend that we, we were seeing. No, we, we saw increases of 52%, 65%, and last year it only grew 9%. And I, I say only, no, because um, if you consider that the overall uh, vehicle sales in the world was shrinking, a growth of 9% is still very representative. Why, why, why did it shrink uh, against uh, 2018? Well, first of all, we already mentioned there was a, a market contraction in 2019 of 5%. And we also foresee, or we also saw um, 
a decrease in subsidies in key markets like China and Europe. We talked about how China and Europe were driving the growth. Some of those subsidies in these countries uh, diminished and the aid the government was placing or the benefits the governments were placing were either reduced or taken away. And, and we saw a clear, um, a clear line uh, tied to, to to a slower growth in, in, in those markets. No? And obviously then the third uh, point that we saw is consumer expectation on technology improvements. No? Overall, I would say that the overall consumer was expecting better range vehicles, more models within the OEMs uh, for these type of vehicles. And that we believe was part of why it only grew 9% uh, during 2019. Uh, for 2020, um, obviously, there are not, not. We don't. We still don't have a complete uh, data. But due to these unprecedented times and, and the global pandemic, we're expecting that the growth would be uh, slowed down even further. Uh, uh, but overall, a growth or, or less of a slowdown if you compare it with combust combustion engine vehicles. No. So overall, the trend is is positive, and we see that this is something that has come to stay in, in the market. Let, now, now talking very fast about the key drivers that, that we've seen the electric mobility system, obviously, and we talked about it, regulations, policies, and, and incentives. This is one, one key pillar for, for this industry. Uh, governments, companies, and just the overall consumer have to be aligned in, in, in this idea to keep the growth coming. The charging infrastructure, no? This is one of the, the, the largest or more talked about uh, topics in when, whenever you talk about the electric vehicles. It's definitely something that both the uh, companies, countries, and uh, both even the OEMs have to invest a lot of money going forward uh, to just grow the charging infrastructure overall. And then battery technology. This is an, an, an excellent topic and, 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 and a very positive one. Just because the battery technology over the last years has been improving so much and, and that's, this has driven the cost of the vehicles down and the range of the vehicles up. No? So, so this is, is great news there. No? And, and obviously the consumer demand will be a, a key driver and a key pillar overall going forward with this market. Now, what is happening in Latin America? No, Latin America is, 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 is obviously is, is something that uh, matters to us mostly. We, we see a different trend than in the, the rest of the world. Uh, Latin America only accounts for about 1% of, of the global sales. We have seven specific markets. And, and I'm mentioning here Mexico because Mexico is within the region, the driver for about 50% or accounts for around 50% of the total uh, electric vehicles and, and hybrid vehicles uh, sales in, in, in the region. No? Why do we see that it, it, uh, it represents such a small piece of the overall uh, market? Well, there are some challenges that we see in, in Latin America, and they're related to cost structure, to infrastructure, regulations, efficiencies, and the overall operations. No? And, and I'm, I'm addressing this because it's something that we as individuals, as uh, company owners, as fleet managers, we have to think going forward on how we have to strengthen uh, this, let's say, uh, line of uh, challenges that we're foreseeing and how we are going to address them. No? So overall, the cost structure, uh, we see that this is tightening up. So the cost of, of electric vehicles is reducing. The charging stations are, are coming through, and, and that is part of, of the infrastructure. But very importantly, regulation has to come and play a big important role here. Uh, just to, to let you know, something that happened in Mexico over the past couple of weeks is that the government took, out, took away the, the import fee for these type of vehicles. No? So depending on the region and the type of vehicle, but that ranges somewhere around 10 to 15% of the cost of the overall electric vehicles in Mexico. No? So that's excellent news, and we need to see that more 
overall in the regions and, and just overall uh, the countries, the governments, uh, very comp uh, comp make that commitment to really change and, and, and getting on board of, of, of this uh, trend that is going to bring so many benefits to, to the world. Now, how will this overall affect your company? No, we were, we're, we're going to talk about the impacts, challenges, benefits, and, and then the overall solutions. Also, some of the impacts that we are foreseeing right now, it's obviously the cost of the fleet. No, TCOs are, are very aligned, and, and every year that passes, and every time the governments uh, put some benefits to it, the, the TCO is, is mostly aligned. Here, what we believe is companies really need to believe in, in making this change and, and onboarding into this trend in order to, to, to make this, this change. And obviously the operations. No, we, we talked about the ranges of the vehicles. We talk about the charging infrastructure and how is that going to change in, in, in our companies. No, and that's something that it's impacting the fleet within within our companies and something that we need to take into account whenever we're thinking about uh, changing or mig migrating into this. Obviously, some of the challenges. No, we we talked about it and, and some 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 are, are around the region. Then. Some some are around our countries and even into a, a smaller scale, in some cases to even our companies. No? The charging infrastructure, no? and here again, governments and especially at least in Mexico, what we're seeing, uh, a lot of OEMs are doing uh, big investments in order to put more and more infrastructure and more and more charging stations in order to subsidize part of the range, uh, let's say, capacity that these vehicles have right now. No? Government regulations, they need to come into play to make this more attractive and, and a, a much uh, long-term strategy has to be foreseen when, when thinking about uh, electric vehicles. Vehicles prices, no? we talked about how uh, the price parity should come around 2025. But then again, if, if it's something that is going on right now, we believe that whoever as an individual or as a company it has really the commitment of being an eco-friendly company or just an eco-friendly person overall, should do the commitment to, to understand that it might be a higher price right now, but on the long term is a correct strategy to do if you're thinking about CO2 emissions. And then overall, the, the autonomy of these vehicles and how that is let's say progressing year to year every year we see big big advances in 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 the vehicle uh, going in the street and the larger ranges that they have benefits that we see obviously an overall cost increase now we talk about that probably larger investment at the beginning but then when you see the whole tco and when you linked it to fuel and just to government incentives the maintenance of your fleet and all the benefits that it has this has um, the overall cost decrease will 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 be there no obviously the co2 footprint no a lot of companies have um, within the, their statements that they're going to come become uh, CO2 neutral or just uh, have a target to lower CO2 emissions overall going forward. Well, this is a very big benefit that the companies would definitely need to be evaluating. No? Improvement on, on, on monitoring, these vehicles are completely connected and this is obviously also tied to safety and, and security and how uh, a greater integration around technology and enhancements. And finally, the, so the, the solutions that we we'll see is that it will, it will have big solutions around tax incentives, uh, tighter regulations, and definitely vehicle transition. No? Vehicle transition is something that uh, companies need to get a partner in order to start thinking about how to, to move into, into into this new space. It's obviously something that not, cannot be done in, from one day to in another. It, it is a process that the companies have to go through. And, and there are a lot of companies out there, and, and we were talking about the, the, the alliance, the element of the alliance, but overall the fleet management companies uh, should be a big, big partner for, for companies or for our customers when, when thinking about do, do, doing this, this transition into electric uh, vehicles. 
And finally, well, this is this is the future. No, we need to definitely get on board, and and we see and 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 we talked about about all the benefits that this uh, uh, business transformation is 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 bringing. Not over, not just in the countries, uh, but also in our companies, and just uh, thinking about a better eco-friendly world. No, it will definitely have economic benefits. Some will be tied to cost avoidance. Some will be tied to just efficiencies, some will be tied to the overall op op operating uh, costs and, and, and benefits in, in our fleets whenever we're driving an, an electric vehicle. And that is definitely tied to the corporate uh, social responsibility, again, of companies, of countries, and even in, the, in their own consumer. No, we, we have to think of a better and eco-friendly uh, planet, and this is definitely the way to go forward. No, right now there there is a big focus in light vehicles, but in electric vehicles now we're also talking about trucks and large uh, transportation equipment. So the trend is coming. We really need to do a deep analysis in all of the vehicles, in all of the benefits that this is going to bring, and to make that that change. No. Uh, uh, I was talking with Stephen uh, the other day, and, and we're talking about the pandemic and how this is affecting uh, the overall world. And, and this is one of the things that might be affecting. You know, it's, it's, a good time, it's a good moment, it's a good time to, to make a stop and really think what our strategy is going forward and how can we be a much more social responsible uh, company overall and how our uh, actions are gonna affect going forward. So, um, this is definitely uh, a benefit that we see going forward. And, and then, and lastly, not the technology and connectivity and all the benefits that, that this is gonna bring into our fleets and to monitoring, into made, making better routes, into making better assessments of our fleets, of our vehicles, of our drivers. Just the overall uh, technology that is coming into these vehicles will prove to make this, uh, our, our fleets much more um, efficient going forward. Well, this is all from, from my, my side. Uh, we'll have a, a space to do some Q&A going forward and hope you find uh, this presentation interesting. Again, Manuel, my name is Manuel Tamayo and I'm very, very glad to be right here with you guys. Take care. Manuel, thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, we now have our third deep dive presentation. And this will be done by Diego Apolari of Heineken. So he will talk about data management and connectivity and how both can lead to cost efficiency in today's vehicle fleet management. Hello everyone, this is Diego. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm here to present you a little bit about, about my work and a little bit about, about activity at Heineken and fleet management. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank for the invite. Thanks, Steven and team, for having me here as a presenter in the Fleet Latin Conference. It's, it's great for me to be here and be part of this great community of fleet managers sharing a, a little bit about, about what we are doing and hopefully we can help our colleagues fleet managers in other companies and also get knowledge from from them uh, about uh, what we are doing and, and this is a special time for us to share good practices a little introduction about myself i'm diego apolari i'm an automation engineer working with fleet for, for uh, a good time already. Uh, I'm a project management specialist and I'm studying MBA. And today uh, I'm working as a fleet manager of Heineken in Brazil. And I'm also ambassador of fleet mobility in Brazil, which I would recommend you guys. Uh, please, you can download the app, go there and be part of this community of fleet managers share uh, what's the train of the, of the of this sector and also to get to know many good and important things about mobility and fleet management. Uh, I 
again, I recommend you uh, download the app there. And I work for Heineken, so I don't, I would not say much about Heineken. You know, it's a very well known company. It's the, it has the best beer in the world, in my opinion, and hopefully yours as well. And uh, just a little bit of numbers, it's a very international company, so it's over, it, it's present in over 190 countries and, and with more than 300 international, regional, or local beer, cider, and non-alcoholic beer beverage brands. Uh, and currently, Hadigan has more than 85,000 employees all over the world. Uh, so again, it's 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 a huge company, it's a huge beer company, and and very famous for its Hadigan brand. An overview about uh, the Brazilian fleet of Hadigan. We uh, currently have more than 4,000 vehicles in four different groups. And what you I am considering here, trucks, bikes, forklifts, and cars. Uh, it's there, it's, this fleet is spread all over the country in Brazil. We run more than 60 million kilometers per year. We consume 5 million liters of fuel, uh, fuel as ethanol, which is common in Brazil, gas, and diesel. And we have more than 4,000 when we are regarding drivers, operators, and users of fleet services. The fleet of Brazil is hybrid, so it's partially funded by leasing or, and, or and rental contracts and partially purchased. Uh, the selective funding method of each group of vehicles is determined based on the, the, the current status of the market conditions, so it has changed over time. Uh, today we have more than 10 players, providers working directly with us, and more than 100 workshops in, uh, for motor bikes and trucks maintenance. Okay. I brought here information about a roadmap that I designed with my team and how connectivity is related to it. So how technology is important for sustain uh, what, do you want, what do you want, but in the end of the day, technology, connectivity and, and all of it will be a tool, a way of working or a way of doing things for you to get your main results which in our case is uh, the base of the structure of the roadmap, people and safety, which is always uh, the, the, the main priority at Heineken. So it, it is as well in our department. So road safety is in the base through telematics, driver behavior management and trainings for our team to reduce accidents, incidents, and potential accidents on the road with our employees. Uh, the people development and team building of the fleet managers and all of the employees that are somehow connected to these people and to, to the fleet department uh, is also in the base of this structure, sustaining the, the next steps that we don't or we are doing so far and, in the, and we are going to do in the future uh from standardizing uh, creating processes and excellence in execution of uh, the fleet processes uh, digitalization and connectivity as a tool for it with uh, software and hardware that can help us uh, to make our lives better and easier when it comes to fleet department and fleet management. And last but not least, uh, to become a department that create mobility and transportation solutions within the company to support all the whole structure of delivery and sales. So this is our roadmap. This is how we 
we do things here in the fleet of Heineken, Brazil. As a strategy, uh, I put this information to show how connectivity is very related in our day-to-day -day routine, in our even our objectives. So from when we look up, look up to our framework, uh, five of our six main objectives and the focuses of the year is connected to, to connectivity, is connected to technology as, and connectivity as a tool for that. Uh, from road safety to digitalization to efficiency, cost reduction, fuel reduction, and fraud reduction, we are using tools of connectivity and technology such as telematics, software, apps, and like checklist apps, uh, and internal com data communication with, with uh, risk management cells uh, that receive this information and generate, you know, uh, a system of a tree of actions that has to be taken. And even when it comes to people in our case, uh, I will come in here one case that we've done recently, a movement of changing uh, very uh, many processes that had to be made in presence, like uh, in place, uh, with good technology to help that, and connectivity with smartphones, intelligence apps, and uh, a risk management cell. We turn many processes in digital ones, and we make it, it much much faster to be done. So it helped people to have more time for them to focus on what they had to focus. So, you know, connectivity helping us uh, to, to sustain the strategy of fleet and to, to reach out our goals. But still, there are some challenges when it comes to, to make, you know, these, these movements in, in company. And I ha we have this kind of uh, big battles, uh, it's common. And, and I put here just to exemplify that uh, what happened to us, what has happened to us, and what may happen with you. So internal budget competition is something that uh, it's very common because uh, it's not something specifically for Heineken. Uh, all companies have very tight budget, and it's common, especially in this, this period of time where we are passing through a uh, global crisis of a pandemic. So uh, to have your budget approved uh, is important. It's something that we did here, prove that it has uh, a return for the company. This return may be in money, in savings. Uh, we can reduce accidents. We can be more productive. You, you can uh bring well-being for for the employees with you know improvements in your process but to acquire this budget and to approve this budget uh don don hesitate and, and show in your business cases the results that you have in your process processes and that you want to improve and uh, don't give up in the first time that you are challenging with the budget Competition, change management and engagement. I give you here one one example about this topic. Uh, telematics is something that when you are going to install the hardware and put telematics in place in, in in the fleet, it normally has some resistance. So what we did and it working well, don't be a punisher with your telematics. Of course, there there will be consequences by the misuse or the continuous uh, showing of dry, the wrong and incorrect driver behavior and unsafe driver behavior, but the, the real engagement is, is through showing the, the good things about the device and the, uh, the connectivity of this 
conflict with the system. The feedback to the drivers has to be linked with the development as a professional. So this kind of engagement of the team it can be done by that. And the last, that's last but not least, one of the most important things actually is find the right partner, a good provider that's really a partner that will be with you, that will be by your side, that will provide you solutions for your problems. And uh, when we are beating, we tend to go to the lowest cost. In this case, uh, the lowest cost may not be the right solution for you. So just one tip, uh, don't look just for the price, look for solutions that this partner can provide you. Okay. And as a result of we are, what we are implementing, what we have implemented, and what we will, will implement in the future of connectivity, we already improved our fuel efficiency by 9%. We would improve our over speeding rate by 26%. We reduced fine traffic fines and ticket, traffic tickets by 6 to 7%. And the investment in connectivity systems and software that we, we did is uh, come back to the company in 2.5 years with a 28% return on investment rate. Uh, and so this is just a brief about our result here. And we have many more to show, but this is what I wanted to, to uh, share with you about we are, what, you, what we are doing, what we are uh, getting out of uh, turning uh, all of the fleet of vehicles in, in, in the connected one in the system. Uh, so, just for me to, to end here, finally, uh, I'm, I'm not able to participate, unfortunately, the Q&A session, but uh, if you have any doubts, any topic you want to explore a little bit more, feel free to reach me. Uh, I'm free of contact, you know, I can share other learnings also. Uh, learn with with you if there is something that you want to uh, share with me and that's it thanks for that's what I wanted to show thanks again Latin fleet Latin team and thanks to Steven and it was a pleasure being a presenter with you guys in a virtual conference of 2020 thanks a lot